Have you ever gotten a lead that's super cold? Like the person does not know you, doesn't care about you. And not to mention, they're not looking to move for like a year from now. So what did you do with that lead? Like maybe you followed up twice and then you were like, "Mm, not worth my time, right? So what if you had a systematic way to remarket to that lead over time, so much so that they came back to you, totally sold on you and told all their friends about you? Today, we're here with Grant Wise, who's shared stages with Grant Cardone, Gary V. He's spoken at NAR and Inman. He's been the chief marketing officer for the first billion dollar real estate team. And now he's here to hang with us today. We're about to go over what to do to become a great marketer, the human psychology behind marketing and advertising, his own four-step marketing plan that you can implement today, deep thoughts on the idea of paying for leads, and stick around to the end for how to increase your conversion rates by 150%. You're listening to the Real Estate Rockstars podcast, the show for agents who've been around the block and are finally ready to build a sustainable, scalable business. Learn the exact steps to build a business that runs like a machine when you don't secretly hate or want to escape from. My name is Shelby Johnson. I am a former army veteran turned real estate entrepreneur. I've closed hundreds of transactions as a solo agent, team leader, and real estate investor before hitting complete and utter burnout. And now, years later, I'm making a comeback and building my business from the ground up in a brand new city, Lexington, Kentucky. But more on that later. For today, let's go deep on marketing. Rockstars, welcome Grant Wise. What would you say are one of the first things that I need to do in order to become a great marketer? Yeah, well, I think they, I think it's both. Like, you've got to become a great marketer, and you have to become a great salesperson, right? I think that recognizing that business happens on the phone. Like it it just does. There's no way to get around this. So I think it's embracing the opportunity that you have to transform into a great salesperson. What do great salespeople do? They spend an hour to two hours a day on the phone prospecting. This is the profession you've chosen. This is what you must do, I think, in order to really be successful. Every successful real estate agent or team leader that you know of spends time on the phone. I got to interview somebody on my podcast recently. And she said, most people just don't realize how boring success is. <laughs> and I wish, I wish more people did. Like entrepreneurship has been so glamorized over the last you know, s- several years. And I've talked about this a lot lately. Entrepreneurship sucks like 98% of the time. It's not actually that fun. It's actually fires like every day. It's not, a, it's not the most enjoyable experience in the world. But success is true success is boring. Can you do the boring work every single day for a long sustained period of time and do it like you love it, even if you hate it? And I think that if you can do that, you're going to be unbelievably successful no matter what you, I don't care if you sell houses or you sell pizzas. With that mindset, you will become unbeatable in the marketplace. And it's helpful. What I've experienced is, is if we're, if we are going to budget one to two hours a day to make calls, that you become a great marketer because marketing feeds sales, right? If you're putting out content and you're developing a brand and the marketplace now has a relationship with you because of these efforts, well, then you can start to generate the leads. Those are, instead of outbound cold interactions, you can generate inbound opportunities for your business. And then because of your content and maybe your remarketing efforts or your emails or whatever that looks like, you're not making cold calls. You're actually just interacting with people that have raised their hand and said, I want to talk to you because I'm interested in buying a home. I'm interested in selling a home. And so marketing really feeds sales. And once you get a listing, you got to sell it. Like there's a, lot of, there's a lot of these caveats here, but I think it's, it's just really committing to the process of becoming who it is that you need to become in order to. And if that's becoming a great salesperson, you're going to budget one to two hours a day to making phone calls. You do that for 30 days, then, then, you know, write in the comment section, hit us both up in a, in a, in a three-way Instagram message my life's changed because I'm busier than I've ever been because, you know, if you, if you, if you get some good, that's one thing that you could do that will transform your business. If I stalking you beforehand, I was on your Instagram page and I saw a reel that mentioned human psychology and like how it ties to marketing and sales. Could you expand mm. a little bit on what you found to be the tie? 
Yeah. What I love about marketing and sales and advertising is it's all human behavior. I mean, at the end of the day, direct response marketing, you're putting out marketing campaigns and the objective of those marketing campaigns is to get people to respond. That's why it's, it's direct response marketing. So like if we put out a Facebook ad to generate a buyer lead or a seller lead for one to three dollars a lead, you're putting out an ad so that somebody will click on the ad, give you their name, email, phone number, and then look at whatever it is that you're giving to them, like a homes list or a, you know, a listing ad or something like that. You're, it's human behavior. You're putting something out that prompts a response. And if you look at sales, it's, it's a having a high level of emotional intelligence to be able to navigate people through conversations so that they ultimately are sold on whatever it is that you're putting in front of them. Sales and marketing and advertising. I didn't go to, I went to college for a semester, failed. My parents maybe said, you got to go back for another one. And I failed. <laughs> and, and I just, Twice. I hated school. Your poor so parents. <laughs> I, I hated school so much. Oh, poor parents. Yeah, it's okay for them. They're working fine for them. I hated school so much. And I think I actually have lately developed a passion for the idea of going back to school because I find them like, oh, I know what I would study. I would study psychology because it's all marketing, advertising, and sales is. It's, 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 the, it's the, the human behavior patterns. I'm going to give you my perfect database marketing plan. That's what I'm going to do. I have never in the history of doing this for a decade and, and helping generate billions of dollars in, in real estate sales, seen somebody fail if they do this plan. I'm going to give you, I think it's four steps. <laughs> Step one, generate leads. Okay. I don't care if you do it through Facebook ads. I don't care if you do it through the Facebook marketplace. I don't care if you do it through Instagram. Quick thing that you could do today, set up a homes list advertisement using a lead form ad on Facebook. You don't even need to set up any targeting. Facebook will do that for you. Just check the special housing category whenever you launch the ad. You'll start getting leads for $1 lead, $2 lead, $3 lead, $4 lead. That's going to give you names, email addresses, phone numbers. That's going to give you the opportunities that you need. Okay. That's step one, generate leads. Step two, build a relationship with that prospect. Okay, this is what a brand is. A brand is the relationship you have with a marketplace. So step two is you're going to start to remarket this prospect with calls, text, emails, and video. Okay, calls, text, emails, video. You want to start to develop a relationship with the person that is looking at property now on your website because you sent them an MLS link, whatever that looks like. And you're going to start to create a connection with those people. Remember this for the rest of your life. When you connect more, you convert more. When you build a relationship with somebody, when you connect with them, you will convert them. This is really, really, really key. And then the third thing is you're going to follow a very simple sales process and convert them. You're going to generate leads, you're going to build a brand, and you're going to convert customers. Okay. Let's say that you spend, you're, you're, you're getting leads for $5 a lead and it takes a hundred leads on Facebook. This is tried and true math. Like if it takes a hundred leads on Facebook to close a deal, some will do better, some will do worse. That means that you spent $500 and you closed the deal. You got a $10,000 commission check. I don't know about any of you. That's a 20 X return. How many of you would do that every single day for the rest of your life, right? This fantastic numbers that creates the predictability that you need to go build a reliable business. The average income of a first year real estate agent is $8,000. The average income of a second year real estate agent is $16,000. The average income of a third year real estate agent is only $16,000. This sounds terrible, doesn't it? I'm like disheartening everybody on here. The reason that this is it because it's because of these old world strategies. When you used to get into the real estate business, you had to then pick up the phone and call everybody that you knew and tell them that you were in real estate. You had to relationship develop this thing all the way to a transaction. And most people struggle with call reluctance. So they get into the industry and they say, what? I got to call people I know and tell them I'm real estate. I'm not doing that. Don't worry. You're not, you're not like, you're not, you're not unique. We've been experiencing these challenges for a long time. Nobody's ever wanted to get on the phone. But when you can generate leads, you take care of the opportunity part of the equation. That's what you're missing right now. If you're sitting here like, I don't know where my next deal is coming from. I'll listen to this podcast because I didn't have anything to do today. I didn't want to make calls. So I got on this thing. Like, <laughs> just joking, of course, but you're missing opportunity. And when you start generating leads proactively, you then take care of the opportunity part. Then you know what to do every day. And it's just relationship management, et cetera. So those are the, that's the process. I've literally never seen somebody generate a lead, build a relationship with that lead and convert that lead and not crush it in real estate. Once you can understand how to do it predictably, my preference is with paid advertising 
then you can start to really grow and scale a business. So I, I'm sorry I went way tactical because I was way up in the clouds, but I wanted to try to make this real for everybody because I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, but hopefully that was uh, helpful. It's all good. I'm loving all of it. And actually, you know, so a lot of agents when they're starting out and maybe even when they're not starting out, they're like, I don't pay for leads. You know, it's like a badge of honor that they have. And they're like, I, you know, and then in turn, I mean, some people have booming businesses and never paying for leads, but a lot of people wear that badge and don't have a booming business. And I heard this analogy the other day that I thought was really cool. And I've yet to say it out loud. So this is just for you, Grant. Tell me, tell me what you think. You're welcome. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so there was a kid. There's a kid and he has one cookie. And he knows that if he gives away his one cookie, he will get 15 cookies in return. I mm-hmm. think that any child, you know, six year old would probably be able to look at that and be like, that's a, that's a good deal. If I give up mm-hmm. one cookie, I get 15 cookies. Good deal. But if you now let's do it with numbers. If you gave someone $1 and you knew you were going to mm-hmm. get $15 back, still a good deal, right? But something happens in the minds of agents when you add zeros. So if someone you know, told an agent, you have to do $1,000 a month in marketing, and in return, you'll get 15000 back, all of a sudden, like heads explode. You know, like no one wants to do it. I don't know. What do you think about that analogy? Any thoughts? I love the analogy. I absolutely love the analogy. It's, it's perfect. Because that's what's happening here. That's how direct response marketing works. Performance-based marketing is you're, you're putting a dollar in a machine. And you're getting $10 back. Who wouldn't do that? The thing is, this may ruffle some feathers. The thing I'm is, real estate, and we're experiencing this in a pretty bad way right now, is a profession that needs to let, raise its standards. And it's not untrue for me to say that this is a fallback profession. Not everybody wakes up at the age of 18 and says, I'm going to go get in real estate. I know people that do, and they've been in the industry their whole life. But Most people have tried a bunch of other things and now they're just going to go into real estate. And a lot of times they don't think about the fact that they're actually starting a business, which is why I think it's such a good idea for agents that do come into the industry to start on a team because then you start with opportunity. You're not having to fund this. You're not having to, you know, invest in this. I think it's a laughable joke that in two weeks you can get a license to help me navigate the largest investment decision I will ever make in my entire life. But, but, This poor guy or this poor girl has to go to school for a year and a half to get paid to shave my bald head. Like cosmetology school have greater requirements for people to give me a buzz cut than we've got for people to go out there and help people navigate the largest investment decision they'll ever make in their life. People don't come into this industry equipped with the understanding that they've got to invest in building a business. So then you look at, okay, the natural sales cycle in real estate is at least 90 days. That's if you get a deal today. You go door knocking, somebody says yes, you list their house. The natural sales process is at least 90 days. You factor that we're making decisions uh, because of advertising strategies with Facebook and PPC. Like We're getting leads way earlier in the funnel, which means they're not going to be ready for 6 months or 9 months or 12 months. People aren't looking at this and saying, Okay, I'm going to invest a thousand dollars in advertising, and that means next month I'm going to. That's what they're doing. Saying, next month I'm going to get a deal. This is fantastic. I'm going to be able to take this money to the bank. No, you're not. You're going to go negative a thousand for twelve months. You're going to be in the hole twelve thousand dollars before you get a return. That's what you've really got here in this industry, in my opinion, is a a very poor understanding of the cyclical nature of the business. So people are making investment decisions with money, thinking. I'm going to have money in my bank account in three days tops because I listened to some guru on social media telling me that if I ran this Facebook ad, uh, I was just going to crush life. No, you're not, dude. Like You're going to go negative for many months and you're going to have to be okay with it. And that's where I think this roller coaster comes from is because people make these investments and then they say, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I got to pull back. And then what happens? In nine months, they close a deal. Oh, Shelby, thanks so much for 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 signing to 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 sell this house with me. Where did where? How did we meet? Where? How did you learn about my business? Oh, I saw this Facebook ad. Oh my gosh, those ads worked. I got to go back and turn these advertising campaigns on. And then we just do this, and then we turn them on and we turn them off again. And people get on and they get off again. My grant rant has ended. Okay. Well, that I mean, I am glad that you you addressed what 
people are thinking right now. You know, when we just did the cookie analogy and what you said about like, you're, you know, you're gonna have to do this for 12 months before you see results. Because as soon as we started talking about hypothetically $1,000 or even $500 a month on ads, like people were thinking, that's risky. What if it doesn't work? Or I won't see results. I don't know. I I have not lived it. I do not have the proven concept to know that it works. And or I don't have money Mm -hmm. to put towards that for 12, you know, six, 12 months without seeing results. So those were all of the objections just coming up through my imagination. But you did, you said it, you said, you know, a solution to that is to start on the team and have someone else fund and show proof of concept and allow you to get reps in. So you're not wasting money on your own, you know, by wasting money. I mean, like the lead comes in, if you don't have the reps and you don't have the sales and the emotional intelligence and know what to do, you're now losing opportunity that yeah, on, a, on a team, it's someone else's money. Sorry, team leaders. <laughs> well, I mean, at the end of the day, like it, it's what it's for. Like it's what it's designed for. I love the team concept. Not everybody runs a profitable team. Like 15% of teams actually make it. So I'm not saying every team is perfect because they're not. But it, you have people that are investing in the opportunities to create the opportunities for you. And that's, I think, what people really don't spend enough time, attention, energy thinking about. And so if you can get licensed in this profession, And then go think about like, okay, I'm going to go work for this team for two years, my apprenticeship, like you're going to go learn on the job and somebody else is footing the bill. It puts you in such a drastically better situation because most agents on teams actually end up making way more on average than the traditional real estate agent. I don't know all the statistics to this. I, I, I know of great friends that I have that run teams and I consult a lot of these teams and their average agent makes way more money than the newer agents starting in the business. I, I think it's a, a wonderful idea for people that are that are new, especially if you just don't feel like you got it. I mean, there's there's people that walk into this industry show up all the time, and they're they've got great financial stability, they've got great business acumen, they've got great contacts. Like they're gonna they're gonna take off running pretty quickly. There's more people that don't, which is why we what, what is this? I think it's like 86 percent of realtors fail within five years or something like that. It's I always it's, say 87 percent by year two, so your your stat is more friendly. <laughs> yeah. uh, see me say your your stat probably the one I should pay attention to because it's probably true. Like, dude, it's, I don't know. Good- Someone fact check both of us. We we don't know for sure. Okay, yeah. so okay, hypothetically, Grant. I am, you know, if I were building, no, if you were building a real estate business, you know, from the ground up, based on what we've already talked about, let's just, you know, agree that you are going to be doing the Facebook ads and you are also going to be making those one to two hours a day of your calls. Like you're doing the right thing on that front. You've also mentioned like marketing. So that way, you know, there's like layers. You're building that relationship in more ways than probably just calling. So what are what are some examples of other things that you can do on top of your Facebook ads and your calling? What I what I what I think is that like that's part of the problem a lot of time. Um we we live in a society and we can't argue this. Like we live in an entitled society that it's like I should get this quick. I I went to Amazon, I bought the thing. Why isn't it here for free in one day? Like <laughs> it's just not how business works, right? It's it's chopping the tree you know, over and over and over again with a white belt mentality. Like if you go take an ax and you try to chop down a tree and you try to, if you try to hit that tree in a hundred different places, it's not going to fall. But if you hit that same tree a hundred times in one place, what's the reality is it's probably going to fall. So whether it's Facebook ads and you get the leads and you make the calls or you buy a, 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 a list and you just cold call or you go door knock, like just find your tree and chop it down. Like find the thing that you want to be successful at that you jive with and, and, and just do the boring work, like become really successful at that. Now, going back to answering your question, the thing that I wanted to say is like, oh, yes, perfect. You could do <laughs> if you do generate leads, you should do something called remarketing. And I've seen this increased conversion on every team I've worked with doing this by about 150%, as much as 150%. Remarketing is where like you generate a lead, okay, now that person's following you on social media, or you're paying to show more advertisements to them. And we pull out the phone and we create video content that's designed to help us build a relationship, create a connection with those people. We're educating them. So we're creating educational content about the buying process or the selling process. And we're putting testimonials in front of them. We're giving them and we're creating a carefully curated experience so that they develop a relationship. If you get a lead and you call them, they may not answer the phone. And the likelihood that they will is actually uh, very slim today because of what's going on in the market. But 
they're now like cookie They're When they go back to Facebook or they go back to Instagram, they're going to see your content because we're paying for them to see the content. So if I spend $10 a day in advertising, which is a great starting budget, I'm going to spend $6 to generate leads and I'll get one or two leads a day. And then I'm going to spend $4 to do remarketing, which means when people come and they opt in, now I'm showing them video content over and over and over. And the reason I want this is, is kind of like, if you ever go to Amazon Shelby to buy a product and you're like, you know what? Maybe I don't need this. Maybe I don't need this, uh, this ice bath right now. Cause I'm really into cold plunges, but maybe I don't need it right now. I don't, I don't know if that fits or not. Sure. Right? Yeah. We'll, we'll go with it. Amazon then starts remarketing you with the hot tub, right? Now, when you go back to Facebook, you go back to Instagram, you're seeing ice baths all the time. And you're seeing influencers jump in the ice bath. Like the algorithm is pushing what you're searching for towards you. And so if somebody's looking at property and they opt into your advertisement, and then they start like you're retargeting them with content that's relevant to them, they start seeing ads for houses. They start seeing ads for realtors. They start seeing ads that feed the experience that they were ultimately trying to have. So you want to stack the deck. You want to stack the deck in your favor by creating video content that allows you to build a relationship. There's so much psychology for why you should be using video. So if you have an aversion to it, like work through that as quickly as you can. Because when you put video content in front of your audience, it allows you to create what they call a parasocial relationship with the people that are watching the content. So Shelby, who is your favorite celebrity? I don't know if this is my favorite, but the first one that popped to mind with was Alex Hermosi. Hermosi. Yeah. Okay. Do you know him personally? I feel like I do. <laughs> but watched... do you? No, actually? I don't. Not yet, Grant. <laughs> yes. Not yet. That's what everybody says, not yet. I don't know Dwayne The Rock Johnson yet. I don't know Taylor Swift yet. But Ooh, she, oh, she's she just, yeah, yeah, Taylor. Sorry, I'm, I am a... Taylor, okay, we're, right. we're Swifties together. This yep. is perfect. Okay, okay, so Taylor Swift. If you and I are in a conversation, we're Swifties. Uh-uh, go back to identity. Swifties, that's an identity, okay? Just so everybody's picking up on these marketing signals. That's psychology. She's so... Uh, we're Swifties. And or you're a Swiftie. I'm not a Swiftie. We're in a conversation. And I start, I start bashing on Taylor. Dude, you're dead. Oh, right. It's game over. Like it, it took you less than two seconds to say that. <laughs> like, I'm actually here spending my time with you on this podcast and we're having a good conversation and we're laughing. Mm-hmm. You know me. Yeah. But if I say something bad about Taylor Swift, done. you're dead to me. Done. So, kill the it's done. Yep. F this man. He has nothing, <laughs> nothing good to say. Oh Forget God. everything he said up until this point. You don't know Taylor yet. And, and Taylor doesn't know you yet. That is a parasocial relationship. It's where one person builds a relationship with a character, but the character has no idea the other person exists. It's most common in celebrities, but it is now extremely relevant in the influencer space. And in 2020, actually, they recategorize influencers as the newest form of celebrities because of the type of a relationship that you build with the audience. It's parasocial. You don't know Taylor Swift, but if I say something about her, you're ready to throw blows. How would you like it if you're listening to this podcast, if that's the way that the consumer out in the marketplace treated you? You'd probably love it. That's what video content allows you to do. It allows you to build these celebrity-like relationships so that if you're out in the community and somebody's talking bad about you, they're ready to throw blows like Shelby was with me just a second ago. Like they're ready to blindly and faithfully defend you, even though they don't actually know you because of the type of relationship that they've built from you. That's why I see very consistently uh, as much as 150% increase in conversion rates. You get a lead. Now they start seeing you with video content over and over and over. You're building the parasocial relationship. And then you're able to convert at a much higher rate. So what else can I do? Yeah. Uh, I went one way with it. And then I came back and actually answered your question. That's what I would do. And it radically changes uh, the types of results that you can get. And it allows you to decrease your average cost to acquire a customer, which increases your profitability. And it brings you deals much faster. So that there's something that I think you could do on top of getting a lead and then following up with that lead, it would be remarketing. Put video content out in front of them, be writing manually email campaigns that you're sending to them. The only reason that we buy leads is to get attention. But once you get attention, you have to keep it. So you've got to make sure that you're doing the things. This goes back to being a great marketer. You've got to make sure that you're doing the things to develop that relationship. 
Okay, I have a question, but I don't want to go on a huge tangent with it because I have a follow-on question. So okay. my my first Got small question is is talking head dead? Am I like overthinking it in regard to like this certain type of video, or do I just need to be doing video with my face in it and just hypothetically, of course. Not at all personal yeah. question. I think that I think that the talking head video is better than no video. If you're building a business, you are likely building a business based off your personal brand in real estate. That's what's most common. It's not like it's not like Tesla. Tesla is a brand on its own. But even when I say Tesla, you automatically think about Elon Musk, right? He's the personification of Tesla. But in real estate, it's usually the blank team, the Grant team or the Shelby team. And I think that having your video out there, especially in the beginning, is way more important than not because you want to develop that personal relationship. I got more, but I'm uh, I'm gonna fight the urge. To go. Okay, well, if you, if it's really like burning within you in just a few minutes, we can readdress. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna respect your wishes. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give them the value. I'm gonna you, keep it to myself. Yeah, that's it. And just withhold. Gotta, they've got to they've got to DM us both on Instagram and a three way joint message before I'll answer the I'll answer the question. Okay, love it. Also, listeners, if you want to DM him, it is uh, like Grant Wise on the gram, and I'm the Shelby Show, of course. But here's my real question, Grant, is you mentioned now remarketing and retargeting. And you're mm-hmm. acting like those aren't the same thing. Can you help can Say you that. help define both and yeah, get yeah. get it straight here for me. So so retargeting is like if if you come to my website and then when you leave my website. I then show more ads to you. That's retargeting. Like I'm retargeting you with content. I'm retargeting you with the same thing over and over and over again. Remarketing is it's marketing to somebody over and over and over again. So retargeting is more of like a tactical thing with PPC and with Facebook and with some of these platforms where I'm just going to keep showing you ads over and over and over again. I'm, I'm hitting you over and over and over again with my advertising. And then remarketing is calls, text, emails, direct mail, billboards. It's it's the act of marketing to somebody over and over and over again. So they're very nuanced. Like they're not like that. It's not like a, some crazy difference. And in real estate, nobody uses the word retargeting. Everybody says remarketing, but it does mean different things to everybody. So those are like, if you go, if you go Google this right now, what's the difference between retargeting and remarketing? You, you may get a, another definition, but they're slightly different. Personal question. So you mentioned that you're really big on like, Zen things like Mind Valley and like you know the mindset and the whole thing. So, what is your what is a day in the life look like? Can you walk us through? Are you a morning routine person? Do you have any things that like you do to keep yourself really in tune? Because there are so many agents out there who are just playing like whack a mole with tasks from the minute they wake up and their head is spinning and they never actually get anything done and they don't have a good focus on like their north star. And I think a lot of it probably comes down to what you're doing to keep yourself centered and grounded. So can you share with us? I think somebody would look at me today and probably not get the value of where I was five years ago. Because I, I kind of tend to subscribe to the Harmozy theory. Like just just work, dude. Like stop trying to cold plunge yourself to like success. It's not going to happen. Wake up and work. I, I'm absolutely in that camp. Uh, I heard somebody call it the farm boy method one time, which really struck with me. I grew up, you know, farming and, and ranching and some of that stuff. So like now, like Grant Wise today, he wakes up and he works. I, like I wake up, I get a cup of coffee, and then I go to work and I knock out one to two hours of work, high, hyper productive, hyper fixated on the things that are actually going to move the needle in my business that day. And then I do go to the gym and I come back and eat. And then I go into making phone calls for two hours a day. I practice what I preach. I don't tell you to make calls, but I'm not going to make them. Uh, and that's a newer thing for me. I, I've not always done that, but I've committed to doing it lately and I'm loving it actually. So I'm probably going to keep doing it. And then I create content. It's more like Harmozy talks about this. It's goal days. Like I'm not going to wake up and go through this crazy routine. I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to make sure that I have a very clear understanding of what is going to move the needle in my business and drive revenue, which is the lifeblood of your organization. Don't anybody tell you it's not. And I'm going to make sure that I get that done today. So I know because we have you know, 20, 25 pieces of content going out a day. I know that I have certain pieces of content I have to create every day. I have a certain number of calls I have to make. I have to write an email. I have to write, you know, I know what my deliverables are. So my advice to you would be, what is the number one revenue driver in your organization? And make sure you wake up every day and you do that. 
I don't care when you do it. Now, if I go back five years ago, I'm going on the tangent. If I go back five years ago, uh, I needed I needed to develop greater discipline. And so I would use things like, I'm going to get up at 420. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to come back and eat, or I'm going to take a cold shower. Like I was actually very, 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 very disciplined with a routine. And I got to a place where it's not like, I don't need this anymore. It's I'm disciplined now. Like I've mastered discipline. I don't need this type of like grind, 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 grind. I'm going to wake up and work. I still get everything done that I used to get done five years ago. I just don't have such a rigid schedule anymore. Uh, the work for me is the, re- the priority. Revenue generating activities is the priority. So I, f- I do that first and then. But there was a time, I think one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard about building a business is, or entrepreneurship is first you build yourself and then you build a business. And so I spent years building myself. And then now I'm in that business phase. And so it's, it's just different. I wanted to give that context because people are always like, what do you do to be successful, Ryan Serhant? And it's like, you shouldn't do what he's doing today. You should go back 15 years ago to when he started and you should ask him what he did then. Like that's how you're actually going to get there. Tangent. That does. Yeah, Complete. no, it does. I, I, I see like the Hermosi and may it not influence, but agreeing there's like alignments in some of his statements too yeah. about like, you know, fuck the morning routine. But you know what? It's funny because, you know, five years ago I got into, I was in the army for six years. I got out and got into real estate and I was hyper disciplined miracle morning person. Like I did every oh. single one of those things every single day for years. And then I actually hit total mm-hmm. burnout and I almost quit real estate. But that's a different... But now I, I do... People are like, oh, you still do miracle morning? And I'm like, I do it when I need it. You know, there are some days where I'm like, okay, I do need to meditate. Like I do need to clear my head and refocus and regather myself. But I do. I just get up and work now. It's interesting. Yeah. Changes over time. It does. It's it's very fascinating. Um, I heard somebody give me a baseball analogy the other day, and I love baseball. I was I wanted to be a professional baseball player when I was growing up. And in baseball, you're very superstitious. Like you don't step on the foul line. You spit a certain number of times between pitches. Like you have weird superstitions that make no sense. You do weird stuff with your gloves. <laughs> and it's the the crutch with a superstition, or that's what it is. A superstition is a crutch. Like if I don't do this, then I can't beat. I can't perform well. I can't be successful. And I think people just need to watch out for that. Like, is this a crutch that you're leaning on? And do you need like, because if that's where it is, it's actually bordering on unhealthy. So I I still do some of these things. Like there's days where I'm like, I got to take a cold shower. Like I've grown to know, like I got to go just sit in there for two minutes and punish myself because I need this thing. (laughs) Uh, So I've learned, you learn about yourself. You learn what you need and you learn what you don't need anymore. And I've just come to a place where I'm at today. This could change in three years. I don't know. But where I'm at today, like I know that I have the discipline to wake up and work. I'm still going to get to the gym. I'm still going to eat. I'm still going to journal. I'm still going to have the priorities of my family. It just changes. Grant, tell us about your podcast. The podcast, The Grant Wise Show, thank you for asking, Mm -hmm. is a show that helps ordinary people understand how to build extraordinary companies. I love interviewing extraordinary people and really just asking them how they got to where they are so that we can all learn from them. And that's what the show is all about. I interview highly successful people in the real estate space and we rehash their journeys from where they started to where they are today. And uh, usually people learn a lot. It's casual conversation, much like this one, which I very much enjoyed. I appreciate you having me on and putting up with all of my wonderful personality. Uh, It's it's, it's much (laughs) appreciated. You stereotype. You said a wine girl, and then you said a Swifty, which you know what? I mean, not wrong, but <laughs> okay. So awesome, everyone. Go Listen, and check I out. am a Swifty. Okay, I, I I am a Swifty now. I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan, so now I'm a Swifty. So I'm um, I'm very grateful for her uh, contributions to our <laughs> football team. It's beautiful. We're gonna make a clip of this, and then we're gonna add her as a collaborator, and then Taylor Swift is gonna accept. So is Travis Kelsey, and you're just gonna explode yeah. everywhere, Grant. <laughs> manifesting yeah. yes okay so that's your podcast everyone go and check that out how what can listeners do for you and your business what actions do you want them to take i'm going all in on youtube right now so go go catch me on youtube subscribe to my channel watch the content uh and all the grant Y show is actually uploaded to youtube i put out daily shorts every day uh the vitamin g which is some mindset stuff if you've appreciated that from me today uh you can get it there uh, the daily g which is daily business tips we have the Wise Weekly, which is our newsletter. Uh, I have Grant Rants uh, also loaded up on my YouTube if you have appreciated those today. <laughs> I got it all. So anything that you want from me, you can find it on YouTube. 
go go hit me over there. Okay, perfect. And guys, again, it's like Grant Wise on YouTube and on Instagram. And okay, this is my last question is what events are you going to in the next 12 months? People might want to see you in person. Mm, I'm going to be... I, I work personally with a guy named John Cheplak, who's one of the top performance coaches in the real estate space. So I hit all of his events. We've got Maverick actually next week, I think, with uh, his Maverick Business Leader Mastermind. And then there's his Tahoe events, I think, that he does, Cheplak, his Cheplak Mastermind. So any uh, Cheplak event. Um, what other events? I'm hosting my own event in Nashville in a couple of weeks. Um, I probably will host another one of those. Um, we'll be at the Gary, Gary Ashton's hosting event in Nashville in a few weeks as well. Um, I don't know. I try to hit them all. Like I try to lobby con it, you know, at places like Inman and, and, and hit some of those events. And then any of the follow-up boss conferences that they put on, I try to I've spoken at FubCon before and, uh, definitely try to go. It's a, a very quality event. Uh, any, any, I think any industry event, I think that you should go like whatever, whatever events are out there. I try to hit them all. Anyone that I can. I mean, if there's restrictions in my, my schedule and I can't make it, I don't, but I, I think you should go to everyone. Perfect. Are you going to Tom Ferry? Summit? Never, never get any work done. Just go to events and your business will be successful. <laughs> That's, That's it. Totally. I also love that you mentioned LobbyCon, which was... I definitely thought that myself and my friend Alex Felice created that. Like we had signs. We would go to like... <laughs> be like, everyone LobbyCon. Like we had a t-shirt, you know, each made. And now you just say it all casual. Maybe I did create it and you got it for me. Could have, could have happened. All right. I'll stand... I'll, I'll back you up. I think I did get it. From okay. For I don't, I've, only, I've only known you for a very short time, but I do believe subconsciously, spiritually. Thank it you. Was, it, was, it was sent to me. Totally. Me. Okay. And... Grant, that that is all we have for today. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Listeners, make sure you go like Grant Wise on Instagram and like Grant Wise on YouTube. All the love in the world. And you guys know the drill. I'm the Shelby Show. And the owner of the show is Aaron Amuchastegui on the gram. Come and follow us. Let us know. Let us know if Grant's rants were not for you. Just kidding. I know you loved it. <laughs> um, otherwise, that is all we have for today. Grant, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. And Real Estate Rockstars, thanks for listening. Thank you.